What is up guys, my name is Ignas, welcome back to the channel. A month back, Matt Murphy, the president and CEO of Marvel Technology, went on CNBC to discuss how they are poised for growth in the next few years. Take a listen to this. We now address the, the sweet spot of the semiconductor industry. What we said in our investor day today is we're in a $20 billion market today, that's where Marvell operates, going to $30 billion in the next few years. So that's a growth rate of just the market alone of 13% a year, which if you look at any other major semiconductor company, nobody's in those kind of secular growth trends. The primary driver of that market growth, Jim, is cloud computing. And that's really was a lot of our big announcements today was really around how Marvell is pioneering the concept of what we call cloud optimized silicon. You hear in the headline news, you know, hyperscale companies hiring silicon teams, people investing in their own chips. Actually, we're the company behind the scenes that goes and makes it happen. That market now is such that we uh, uh, can articulate as a company 15 to 20% long term growth driven primarily by the cloud, then 5G, as you mentioned, that's still tracking extremely well. A lot of that's still in front of us. And then automotive, which, which, uh, we're, think of us, Jim, as being in all the new future cars, the new chips for automotive, the networking chips, the computing chips, the storage chips. That's where the future of automotive is going. So it appears that the company will be taking huge markets going further and have highest growth in the semiconductor industry. But is all that success already priced in? To check on that, I've added two more names from the industry. So for the comparison, we have Marvel Technology, ticker symbol MRVL, NXP Semiconductors, NXPI, and ST Microelectronics, ticker STM. To make the comparison possible, we will be looking into nine different factors. Last four core quarter earnings results, annual revenue growth, analyst price targets, forward price to earnings ratio, price to sales ratio, return on equity, current ratio, dividend yield, and dividend payout ratio. The best company under each factor will get a point, so it is possible to have from 0 to 9 points, and in the end the stock with the most points will be considered the winner of this comparison. I understand that not everyone has the time to sit through 10 minutes of analysis, so I will just bring the results up front for you to to take a look into first. So after checking in on the ratios and assigning points, these are here the results. Marvel Technology got 1 point, NXPI 3 and STM 6. So with the most points, STM is considered the winner of this comparison. Now if you are still interested in how we got here, then continue on with the analysis. The first factor are the last 4 quarter earnings results. When a company reports earnings, they are compared to expectations of analysts. So earnings can either beat expectations, meet them or miss them. We will consider that beating expectations is a plus 1, meeting plus 0 0.5 and missing 0. Then we send the results up to a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 4. And in the end, the stock with the highest Sam gets a point for this factor. So these are quarter learnings for Marvel Technology and Q4 of 2020 met expectations, Q1 of 2021 met, Q2 beat and Q3 beat. So with two beats and two meets in quarter learnings we get a sum of three. Earnings for NXP semiconductors and Q4 of 2020 beat expectations, Q1 of 2021 beat, Q2 beat and Q3 beat. So with four beats in quarter learnings we get a sum of four. Earnings for ST Microelectronics and Q4 of 2020 beat expectations, Q1 of 2021 beat, Q2 beat and Q3 missed. So with 3 beats and 1 miss in quarter earnings we get a sum of 3. Results for the last 4 quarter earnings factor in the table and with a sum of 4 an XPI gets the first point. The second factor will be the annual revenue growth. As potential investors we want to check if the revenues of a company are on a steady increase. We will take a look into the revenues of the four most recent years and compare them one by one. If revenue was on the increase from one year to the next, we will consider it as a plus one, and if it was on the decrease, it will be a plus zero. Then we'll sum the results up to a minimum of zero and a maximum of three, and in the end, the stock with the highest sum gets a point for this factor. So these are annual revenues for Marvel, and going into 2019, there was an increase to 2.87 billion US dollars, then into 2020, we had a decrease to 2.7 billion, and going into 2021, 
and there was an increase to $2.97 billion. So with two increases and one decrease in annual revenues, we get a sum of two. Annual revenues for an XPI. And going into 2018, there was an increase to $9.41 billion. Then into 2019, there was a decrease to $8.88 billion. And into 2020, we had another decrease to $8.61 billion. So with one increase and two decreases in annual revenues, we get a sum of one. Annual revenues for STM. And going into 2018, there was an increase to $9.66 billion. Then into 2019, we had a decrease to $9.56 billion. And into 2020, there was an increase to $10.22 billion. So with two increases and one decrease in annual revenues, we get a sum of two. Results for the annual revenue growth factor are in the table. And with sums of two, both Marvel and STM each gets a point. Factor number three are the analyst's price targets. As investors, we want to check if the current share price is below the average price target of analysts. If it is currently under the average target, we will consider the stock as undervalued. And in the end, the company with share prices furthest away from the average analyst target to the lower side gets a point for this factor. So for Marvel Technology, we have 27 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of 52 to the highest of $100 per share. The average is at $73.70 and and the current share price is at $72.73. This suggests that there is still 1.3% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For NXP we also have 27 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of $189 to the highest of $300 per share. The average is at $237.81 and the current price is at $226.96. This means that there is still around 4.8% of room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For STM, we have 8 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of 46 to the highs of $64 per share. The average is at $55.88 and the current price is at $51.76. So there is still around 8% of room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. Results for the analyst price targets factor are in the table and with most room for growth, STM gets another point. Factor number 4 is the forward price to earnings ratio. It is calculated by taking the current share price and dividing it by the estimated future earnings per share. This is the standard price to earnings calculation with the difference that earnings here are predicted by analysts. So in the end, the stock with the lowest forward price to earnings ratio gets a point for this factor. Marvel Technology has a forward price to earnings at 35.21. Forward price to earnings for NXP semiconductors is at 18.52. And the ST Microelectronics has the forward Forward price to earnings at 21.74. Forward price to earnings ratios are in the table, and with the lowest value, NXP gets another point. Next factor is the price to sales ratio. It is calculated by taking the company's market cap and dividing it by the trailing 12 months worth of sales. The formula suggests to be looking for a company with a low market cap and a high result in sales. So, in the end, the stock with the lowest price to sales ratio gets a point for this factor. Marvel has the price to sales at 14.86. Price to sales for NXPI is 6.02 and STM has the price to sales at 3.79. Price to sales ratios are in the table and with the lowest value STM gets another point. Factor number 6 is a return on equity. The percentage here shows how well the company is managed and if money from investors are efficiently handled. So in the end a stock with the highest return on equity percentage gets a point for this factor. Marvel has a return on equity at minus 3.2%. Return on equity for NXPI XPI is at 20.14% and STM has the return on equity at 22.53%. Return on equity percentages are in the table and with the highest value another point goes to STM. Factor number 7 is the current ratio. As investors we want to find that the company is able to cover its debts with assets but also that they are still actually being leveraged. So in the end the stock with the highest current ratio under 3 gets a point for this factor. Marvel has the current ratio at 1.76. Current ratio for NXPI is at 1.47 and STM has the current ratio at 2.67. Current ratios are in the table, and with the highest value under 3, one more point goes to STM. Next factor is the dividend yield. It is calculated by taking the annual dividend per share and dividing it by the share price. A high yield may suggest that the company is sharing profits with shareholders, and that is a great passive income source that we as investors are looking for. So in the end, the stock with the highest dividend yield percentage gets a point for this factor. Marvel Technology is currently paying an annual dividend of $0.24 cents per share, 
Euro, which is a yield of 0.33%. And XPI is paying $2.25 per share annually, which makes a yield of exactly 1%. And STM pays $0.24 cents per share on an annual basis, bringing that to a yield of 0.47%. Dividend yields are in the table, and with the highest percentage, a point goes to an XPI. The last factor is the dividend payout ratio. It is calculated by taking the total amount of dividends and dividing it by the net income. A low payout ratio shows that the company is able to sustain its dividends, but also has plenty of cash to reinvest back into the business. So in the end, the stock with the lowest payout ratio percentage gets a point for this factor. Marvel Technology currently has the payout ratio at 16.61%. Payout ratio for an XPI is at 21.21%. And STM has the payout ratio at 11.97%. Payout ratios are in the table, and with the lowest percentage, one more point to STM. So that was it, if you got value or new ideas, then make sure to push that thumbs up, it helps the channel a lot. If you are looking for the results, I have moved them right in front of the analysis. Now I got a question for you, are you buying into any of the semiconductor names mentioned today? Suggest your best pick in a comment below. If you are interested in getting notified exactly when I buy or sell any stock, then consider memberships. By becoming a member, you will get access to Discord, where I share the stock watchlist and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week we did a stock comparison on three other semiconductor companies, and there is also an update for our eToro swing trading portfolio. If you are interested in any of these, then click on the video currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching, and I will be seeing y'all in the next one.